So after about eight months of being in Texas and barely kind of eking out a living, I moved back and then Kiki and I got a duplex shortly after that. I ended up working at a place that created jewelry and little membership flags for Rotary International. You've probably seen on signs, there'll be like a graphic representation of a lion. And then next to it, there'll be like this big thing that looks like a spoke wheel. And it says Rotary International. And that's like a business club that every city and state has. I worked there for about a year and that was the first steady graphic arts job that I ever had. And then I heard through Kiki, her aunt, who had some ties to Hallmark Cards, which is in Kansas City, they were looking to hire a whole bunch of different graphic artists. They were trying to make this job position that would be like a universal artist who could both design and do tech stuff and do pre-press. So I ended up getting hired at Hallmark Cards. That blew me away that I could be working at Hallmark. It just never entered my mind. Part of the application process was that all the applicants had to perform this color test. Part of the job that we were doing was called color separation, where you would try to get the printed result to look like the original piece of artwork. They're like, you can take up to four hours to do this test. The goal was to take these color swatches that were purposely made to be not exact matches to their color targets and get as close as you possibly could. But there was hundreds of these. If you failed this, you wouldn't get the job, basically. They brought me into this color-controlled room, so it's like the lighting was neutral. I've since learned that there's a science that your eyes will try to make similar colors the same color. Essentially, if you take a long time to make color judgments, um, it works against you. Your initial observations are usually the correct ones, like what looks similar, because if not, your eyes will start to make them the same color. I could just tell what my eyes were doing, so I just started going through really quickly, and I made a bunch of very fast judgments. Um, So I had the the test done in under an hour. And when he came in, he said, um, you're done with the test? And I said, yeah. And he was like, are you sure? And I said, yeah. Um, and then that made me feel even more self-conscious. But I, I scored in the 90% of like almost the very top. And there was like 200 people that they hired. Most of them just labored. Was the four-hour time frame, was that just, was that a part of the test? Like a psychological part to, to trick you? And then I worked there for about um, seven years. And so Hallmark Writers give you assignments for like, hey, we need this, we need that, and and that's what you do all day? For the most part, what we did was uh, redesign. So if there would be a piece of artwork that was uh, like a bunny with a bunch of Easter eggs, so it's you know more green and yellow in color scheme, and it's a really cute bunny, but he's holding an egg, and they want to change that into a Valentine's Day card. Basically, Photoshop all of the eggs into hearts, and then you would change the color scheme instead of green and yellow into you know, more lavenders and pinks and reds. So you're doing as much graphic design as you are illustrations. Yeah, actually, probably more. Whenever we would do original illustration stuff, that was like celebrated in the team. They would show it at the next weekly meeting. And, you know, this is the the, the brand new piece that Freddie had drawn. And ever, since there's so much redesign, people would actually go, oh, original? Hallmark must license superheroes because I see superheroes on Hallmark cards sure. all the time. Did you get to incorporate some of your comic book love into the Hallmark job. I did, yeah. Um, Hallmark does these like birthday packs where you can buy a bunch of napkins and a centerpiece display and plates that are all branded as Superman or whatever. At the time, there was this over-the-top centerpiece. It would basically be like a foot and a half or two feet tall once it's assembled, and then it would be like two feet wide or something, and it's all made of cardboard. So I drew a Superman display where, unfortunately, I drew everything but Superman because they had a licensed piece of artwork that was from a... I don't know if it was drawn specifically for it or if it was from a style guide or something, but I got to draw all the buildings buildings and the, some of the villains and there was like uh, debris and like a Lex Luthor off to the side and Jimmy Olsen and all this stuff. And then I did a bunch of stuff where it'd be like a uh, Snoopy, like, you know, peanuts, but uh, the pose just needs to be altered a little bit, you know, have to follow certain style rules of never having the arms foreshortened and stuff. There was all these rules to it. And then you would always make everything look wiggly whenever you would illustrate it. Um, so you'd alter stuff all the time.